We have another NHL player going through the NHL waiver wire. We have some injury updates, and we're also taking a look at the future potential trades revolving around players like Ryan Nugent Hopkins of the Oilers, Ryan Getzlaff of the Anaheim Ducks, and of course, Taylor Hall of the Buffalo Sabres. We'll jump into all the latest news coming up next. Welcome back to another video here Top Shelf Hockey. Let's once again kick things off with the news from the NHL waiver wire. We again have a player from the New Jersey Devils being put through waivers, and that's defenseman Matt Tennyson. Of course, Tennyson's only on a one-year deal at 700 k so there's certainly no uh, big-time commitment when it comes to salary or contract term to commit to for any team thinking about putting in a claim and making an acquisition here. Of course, he's uh, a little bit older, he's bounced around, a little bit of a journeyman defenseman, hasn't really played a ton of NHL hockey, but certainly could be an interesting depth piece if other teams want to uh, you know, make a consideration there, especially with the contract the way it is. It's a pretty low-risk uh, move for most teams if they want to do that. Otherwise, you'll likely end up on the taxi squad for New Jersey. San Jose Sharks defenseman, one of the league's highest paid players, Eric Carlson, is again injured. We know he's had a rough start to the season and that mega contract he signed up the Sharks right now is not looking too good. I mean, I must say for the money he makes, he's really hit the decline button rather hard here in the last couple of years. Uh, the injuries, I think it's fair to say that he suffered um, towards the end of his career in Ottawa have really taken its toll on him. And then even since he's been in San Jose, he's had a lot of groin issues. And that appears to be what's hampering him here yet again. Now, they're saying it's not necessarily what was bothering him in the past. So maybe it's a, a different kind of groin strain. I don't know. But either way, it's the same sort of uh, issue that he had before. Uh, he's going to stay home from the recent road trip here, see how things go. But still, not good news for a player, uh, you know, making over 11 million bucks and not putting up the points. Uh, certainly not looking good defensively. Uh, things are just spiraling downhill for Eric Carlson. Hopefully he can get healthy and find his game and at least play at a higher level to uh, justify that contract a little bit better. But the Sharks, I'm sure, are having buyer's remorse when it comes to that acquisition at this point. Now, as I mentioned as well, I want to take a look at the future of three NHL players. They're all veteran guys who have been around around the NHL a long time and, and certainly have uh, you know some interesting considerations to make here in the upcoming not too distant future, all because they're pending unrestricted free agents. Where will their paths take them? Let's start in Edmonton with Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Now, he's certainly a player that I, I would be quite surprised if Edmonton trades him, but here's the only scenario I see unfolding where they could do that is if contract talks just get too contentious and they don't see any way that they're going to get him signed. Maybe they'll trade him in the offseason, uh, sign his signing rights, that is, um, you know, for a draft pick or something like that. But otherwise, there's no way they're going to be trading Nugent Hopkins unless they absolutely bought him out and are going to be missing the playoffs, which I don't see happening either. So, I mean, Nugent Hopkins has made it clear he really would like to be uh, in Edmonton Oilers for a long time yet, likely the rest of his career if possible. And that, you know, could be possible, but right now, contract talks are not going very well. They had a lot of talks leading into the beginning of the season, but were rumored to be still quite a far ways apart from coming to an agreement. Um, and then it was reported that Talks were kind of put on the shelf and kind of put on hold. Um, and then we're expected to resume here. And it's all remained quiet. According to Oilers reporter Ryan Rashog at TSN, uh, he's made mention here a couple times recently that it's still eerily quiet on the Nugent Hopkins front for a new contract. I would suspect he's probably going to be looking for a longer term deal if possible. Probably somewhere around the $7 million range. Maybe a little bit more. I would think a $7 million, maybe seven and a quarter million, something to that effect would probably be what he's looking for, roughly. I mean, he's proven to be an extremely valuable piece to Edmonton. The former first overall number one pick was a centerman for them for a long time, but recently, in the past few years, he's had an opportunity to play wing a lot with Connor McDavid, and it's fit in quite nicely there. Uh, so, of course, you know, he's a pretty valuable piece there. For them to lose Nugent Hopkins would not be good. But, of course, the Oilers don't exactly have a ton of salary cap space. They have a lot of money eaten up between McDavid and Drysaddle, rightfully so. Those guys earn their paychecks uh, game in and game out. So there's no problems there. But the problem with that is that it's difficult kind of, you know, some, giving you a solid supporting cast and getting everybody paid to the levels that they often feel like they deserve. Now, the Oilers also have to factor in that they have some younger players that are going to be coming out of their entry-level contract soon, and they're going to be looking for raises. They have a goaltending question mark beyond the current season as well. They have Koskinen for a little while longer under contract, but again, 
Mike Smith becomes a free agent. What do they do in terms of goaltending that way? So that's you know certainly questionable for sure. Uh, and obviously heading into next year, the Oilers only have 11 players under contract. They have a fair bit of players that are going to be expiring UFAs or RFAs and needing new deals next year. That leaves them with about $24.5 million in salary cap space to round out their roster, which is going to be an additional 12 players. So that's not a lot of money to go around. If you think about it, you know that's barely $2 million or a little bit better per player. Now, a lot of those guys can be signed at a million bucks, two million bucks. Nugent Hopkins is going to take a much bigger chunk of that pie, and it's going to make things even more challenging to get the other guys uh, you know, around them completed as well. I mean, you also have a guy like Tyson Berry who signed a, you know, a short-term prove-it contract. He could be looking for an extension with Edmonton. I think it's fair to say that's worked out reasonably well so far. Like I said, you got some other young players that are going to be coming up as well, including a guy like Yamamoto. Uh, so obviously he's played well. He's going to need a decent raise too. So they have a lot of questions that need to be answered here. And the Nugent Hopkins contract is certainly going to be a big one for them, given the fact, like I said, they have a couple of other core pieces you know, sign long term, but you know he's a big piece, and even on their blue line too, like guys like Nurse and Bear, like they're not locked up long term yet either. So they're all going to be needing new contracts in the not too distant future too. So the Oilers need to be careful here how they proceed. They don't want to lose them. It looks as though there's certainly enough mutual interest on both sides. Um, and like I said, I would only see a trade happening. If the Oilers bottomed out and contract talks were going really bad or something like that, and we're way too early to say that could happen. Uh, So I don't think there's necessarily going to be trade talks around Nugent Hopkins per se, but we might have to see the Oilers maybe make other trades in order to make enough necessary space to bring in some other players to offset what he's going to be being paid. And at the same time, I hope that we don't have to see them go down the road of trading his rights or something if they just can't come to an agreement. But uh, right now, contract talks are on hold. Everything is really quiet. And because of that, there certainly is some concern in Oilers Nation because of it. Now, as I mentioned as well, I want to take a look at Ryan Getzlaff of the Anaheim Ducks. His name was brought up recently on NHL Insider Trading on TSN on Thursday evening. And apparently there is a lot of interest around Getzlaff from around the NHL. He's a pending unrestricted free agent. He's making a lot of money, but still Anaheim could retain salary. Uh, You know, he'd be a great pickup for a lot of teams looking to make a playoff run here. Now, at this point, though, what's being reported is that the Ducks are not necessarily planning to go to Getzlav and ask him to waive his no-move clause in order to facilitate a deadline deal, but it's something that I would imagine they'd be open to in a discussion that they might have if he approaches them about the possibility. I mean, they might be wild with some really tempting offers, and if they are, it, it might be at least a brief conversation they have. If he's not interested, obviously they can't pursue that given the fact that they gave him that full no move in his contract but given all of his experience his past experience of winning a Stanley Cup when he was much younger of course he's got international experience gold medals Ryan Getzloff has been a very successful hockey career so far so for a team looking for you know an extra depth number two number three center to go into the playoffs he'd be an ideal guy to consider from that but they also reported on insider trading like I said that the Ducks are not prepared to ask him to waive just yet and there is a possibility as well that they see that Getzlav could want to remain in Anaheim and maybe even work out uh, a a much cheaper shorter term extension for two or three additional seasons so he can kind of finish up and ride up the rest of his career in California of course his family is quite settled and secure there Uh, you know obviously it comes with a certain lifestyle which I'm sure a lot of those guys once they get living up there tend to not want to give up which I don't blame them so clearly and there's no guarantee that Getzlav goes anywhere so at this point. It's only going to be if he wants to. And like I said, there is apparently a lot of interest out there. A lot of teams are checking in at least to see if the veteran would be willing to accept such a move for a potential another shot at another Stanley Cup. So we'll have to remain to be seen on that front, but no guarantee he goes anywhere unless the tempting offer just can't pass it up. Now lastly here, I want to touch on the Sabres. And Taylor Hall. Now, yesterday we were talking about the real possibility, according to Elliot Friedman, that uh, if things don't get better in a hurry, and right now we have no reason to think that they will, that the Sabres could end up in a situation where they may have to trade Taylor Hall. And Jack Eichel may get to the point soon enough that he wants out too. I mean, he's obviously been clearly frustrated in the past and has expressed that publicly numerous times uh, and wants to win. So if they're having another bad season, you have to think that you're getting another step closer to having that be a real possibility. But in the case of Taylor Hall, they actually reported on NHL Insider Trading that there's no guarantee he gets traded, that apparently both sides are interested at least in having exploratory talks 
on a longer term extension. And to be completely honest with you, I think this makes absolutely no sense at all for either side. Buffalo Sabres, right now you're in the basement here yet again. Taylor Hall has one goal on the season. You're paying him big bucks. Why would you want to extend him and end up in a situation, maybe let's say Jack Eichel wants out, and you end up kind of almost needing to do a rebuild on a rebuild. Like that's the real situation that this could be in if things don't get better in a hurry here. And then you're going to be stuck with a Taylor Hall contract that could be comparable to Jeff Skinner. And both those contracts could be absolutely albatrosses for the team moving forward. I honestly don't see how it makes a lot of sense for the team unless they're trying to do this as a ploy to again make Eichel happy but at this point I'm not sure that Eichel is going to be happy with one player I think he needs a better team around him and until that starts to come together I'm sure his frustration is going to be you know continuing to get higher and you know, like I said, be a higher risk that he wants out of there. But from Taylor Hall's perspective as well, he's made it clear in the offseason, and you start to wonder if he obviously he wasn't being honest, that he's all about wanting to get more of a shot at the playoffs and have a chance to win the Stanley Cup in his young career. So far in Taylor Hall's career, he's had very, very limited playoff experience, uh, missing the playoffs majority of the time, not getting anywhere near it, and that was one of the big things he made clear last offseason. He wanted a chance to win. That's why... Most people were really surprised when he chose Buffalo, but where it was a one-year deal and obviously other teams that might have been further along and you know having a better shot to contend for the Cup uh, were obviously offering a lot less money. So it's like, okay, it makes sense. He'll get the bigger payday from Buffalo. He can play there, maybe get moved to the deadline, chase the Cup that way, and then reevaluate in the offseason again next year. That's what I figured would happen. So for both sides to be interested, it would be uh, nonsensical really and the other reason i don't see it happening is that taylor hall is uh, represented by darren ferris darren ferris almost always wants his players to go to free agency explore what's out there test the market he always seems to recommend that i would be quite surprised if hall and the sabers come to an agreement before free agency gets underway i'm not going to say that he absolutely will not sign there uh, obviously if there's interest on both sides maybe it happens i just don't think it's a good fit in a long term at least for either side um so maybe they come to an agreement after free agency starts maybe he explores the market and decides to come back i don't know that's i guess that's anything's possible but i'd be quite shocked if hall signs an extension given the fact of who his agent is before the season's over but i guess let me know what you think do you see a future of taylor hall and buffalo do you think the sabers and hall should work out a long-term extension well how do they proceed here because clearly things are not working really to their utmost abilities uh they're in the basement of the division yet again something's got to give here before they just you know give up and kind of start fresh which is going to be tough to do given where they're at that is all your news updates for today. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.